this is one that was hard for me to do just because I like the guy so much. And what I'm talking about is that Tommy Tuberville, the former football coach, the head football coach for the Auburn Tigers, and somebody that I really admired. In fact, I was really upset when they fired him. I always have been a big Tuberville fan. I was I thought that he kind of got a raw deal and they should have given him a little more time to get the program back where he wanted it to. I know that there's some Auburn fans that disagreed with me on that, but I've always been a huge Tupperville fan. The man ran a phenomenal program. And especially when you're considering that the goal, at least the intended goal of any athletics program at a institution of learning, that's not just a professional league like the NFL or the major league baseball or minor league system within major league baseball when you're not talking about people that are specifically playing for money, that the intended goal of a college football program or any college athletic program ought to be to develop young men and develop young women. So regardless of what the sport is, regardless of the the implications there, you are teaching student athletes and you're helping them engage in a process which is supposed to enrich their learning experience and also enrich them as individuals. And that's something that Tuberville excelled at. I mean, the guy was really good at the Chaplin program, something that was sort of the envy of the college football world. A lot of people don't know that. That didn't exactly get a lot of headlines, but his Chaplin program was top notch. And there were other programs that specifically modeled their Chaplin programs after Auburn University because of that. Uh, had a phenomenal chaplain program. The athletes had very high test scores under Tuberville. He made sure that that was a part of the experience of being an Auburn Tiger when he was the head football coach. And I think that he's a great coach from the the standpoint of, can you remember any other coach that went on a six-win streak against Alabama? No, you can't because it never happened. So the guy knows football and he was good at developing young people, which in my mind, is the primary goal, not the only goal. We like to win, and obviously that's a big part of it. But that is the primary goal of any athletic program that is associated with a institution of higher learning. And so I have a great deal of admiration for Tommy Tuberville. I really, really like the guy. And of course, I'm an Auburn Tiger, and and that doesn't hurt. And by the way, I actually took a poll on this as to whether or not Alabama fans would actually um, vote for Tommy Tuberville. And there were a few people that said, ah, just because he's associated with Auburn that I wouldn't vote for him. There were the vast majority of them though said, yeah, I'm an Alabama fan, but I don't really care. As long as I like the guy's politics, I'll vote for him. So I don't think that's going to be a huge hindrance. There's going to be some people that aren't going to vote for him just because he is associated with Auburn. But I think that that is a, a very small minority. And I don't know that it's going to make a huge difference in the Republican primary, at least not a noticeable difference. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but I don't think so. And and granted, this was a completely unscientific poll, so I'm not claiming that it's something that I know for sure, but I'm saying just based on what I've seen and heard, I don't think that it's going to be a major contributing factor. I will, however, say this, though. Tommy Tuberville has been making the media rounds since his announcement that he is going to be running for Senate against his primary opponents, and then hopefully for him one day against Doug Jones, trying to get Doug Jones's Senate seat. And I have been thoroughly underwhelmed and unimpressed with his performance on the national stage and talking to local journalists as well. And sort of to illustrate this, here is a clip of Tommy Tuberville doing an interview over the weekend with Fox and Friends, and they ask him some very basic questions. The interview only lasts three minutes. So here's a a clip from that interview. So what are some of the key issues for you and how you would want to impact Washington? Well, as you said, I'm not a politician, uh, especially a career politician, and I don't want to be. You know, I want to be somebody that just helps out the people of this country. You know, this is a great country. I've had a chance to travel all over uh, uh, the world, you know, being a football coach, uh, going to see our troops, traveling all over the country, uh, been in homes, rich homes, poor homes, middle class homes. 
out just meeting the people as a football coach, but now I want to do it as a as mm -hmm. somebody that's going to help, sure. that tries to give back. And uh, I think I think it couldn't be a more I could think ten or twelve people that's in the coaching business right now would make great congressmen or senators mm -hmm. in Washington D.C. When you're looking at that clip. I think the biggest problem is they ask him specifically for a policy proposal. But what, what would be a policy proposal that, that you would put in place? What kind of things would you as a senator want to see being passed in the Senate? And he basically talks about how there are football coaches that would be good senators, which has nothing to do with what is being discussed here. And again, I really like... Tommy Tuberville is a person. I respect him as a man and as a brother in Christ. I think that he's about as good a guy as you'll ever meet. And I would love to meet him someday. He's somebody that I would, I really admire and, and really respect. But if that's his answer to a policy proposal, if that's what is supposedly his game plan, as it were, pun intended, for being a senator... I'm sorry, you're going to have to do a lot better than that. Not just a little bit better, a lot better. Now, I'm not saying that you have to, especially in a national interview, because I realize that you can't get too technical because it'll go over the audience's head. But you have that opportunity to talk about any number of issues facing our country, the national debt, illegal immigration, some of the things that we were just talking about with, that are facing the state of Alabama with Becky Garrettson. You could talk about sex trafficking, you could talk about, I mean, just any number of things. You could talk about even, if you want to go a little bit off the, the beaten path, you could even talk about marijuana, prison reform. I mean, th there's a list longer than my arm of things that you can discuss. And essentially, all you're talking about is that you've been a politician, or th that you think that other football coaches would be good politicians. And that you need some some leadership. I mean, that's essentially what his answer boiled down to. And I'm just sitting there scratching my head like, th that's not a plan. That's not a policy proposal. That's just sort of a, a bunch of vague platitudes. And so it was an answer that was very underwhelming. And he kind of continued that trend in the very next question where he was asked about his strategy, his political strategy to winning. So now we're moving out of the policy realm and what he would like to actually do if he became a senator into, okay, how do you plan to beat your Republican opponents and then eventually Doug Jones? And, and here was his answer. Well, uh, Tommy, just real briefly, I, I know you don't want to give away everything, but uh, <laughs> as coaches do, going into the big game, they have a strategy. What's your strategy to win? Well, first of all, you know, I want to support President Trump, uh, support him from day one. I'm the only candidate in this uh, race that supported him in his last election. Uh, I believe in him. He has a great work ethic. You know, the, the, the guy's a winner. And the things that he's done, uh, we need people to stand behind him in the Senate, mm -hmm. in Congress, to help him get his agenda through. That, that's the main thing. But I okay. want to help this state in Alabama. You know, Alabama's going to grow. It's going to yeah. really grow. We've well, got a Democratic senator in there right now that yeah. is not doing the things that uh, we need to do to help the state of Alabama. Yeah. So, again, Tommy Tuberville asked a very specific question. What's your strategy for winning? And essentially, the only answer that he has is, well, I really like President Trump. Which, again, not necessarily a strategy. Now, I think that this is a little bit closer to an answer, and my explanation for that would, of course, be that this has had mixed results, but it has worked for certain people. For example, Ron DeSantis in Florida. He basically ran as mini Trump. I mean, that's... That was essentially his strategy. He even had that awful, awful uh, campaign ad where he basically talks about Trump almost as, as people really should be talking about God if they were really faithful to him, that they he was uh, teaching his kids about Trump, reading children's books to them about Trump, and, and just saying Trump, 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 not talking about any policy proposals or anything like that, just talking about how much he likes Donald Trump. And in this state, that may not be a terrible strategy. This is the state that went harder for Donald Trump than any other state and where he enjoys a higher popularity rating than any other state in the country. And we kind of go back and forth some with West Virginia, but suffice it to say, we are 
there you could make a very good case for Alabama being the most pro-Trump state in the United States. So maybe that strategy works out. Maybe it's not the worst strategy. And he was quick to point out, and he's not incorrect in this, that he's the only candidate running that supported Trump from day one. Well, I think that that's probably true because right now the only person that is running against him is Bradley Byrne. And I, I don't remember, because frankly, I don't care. I don't remember what Bradley Byrne's stance is on Trump was, was on Trump during the primaries or early on. I don't really remember. Frankly, I don't care. I care about how he votes and I care about how he conducts himself as a member of the House. I don't care how much he supports the president. Now, maybe in this state, people that don't like to think, people that don't want to think and want to let other people do their thinking, that may be a strategy that's effective. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people like that in the state. I don't know if it's quite enough to win a Republican primary, but it's a significant number. And that's the problem that I have with this strategy overall, is that based on what I was hearing right there, that is the sign of someone that is not thinking. Somebody that's saying, well, my philosophy and my strategy is basically, I'm just going to agree with whatever that guy says. And there's a lot of people that do this politically. Believe it or not, even though they're few and far between, there are people that, that probably have done similar things with me. That, okay, well, Caleb supports that policy, so I'm just going to support it too. I've never asked for anybody to do that. I'll present my side of it. I'll uh, give you some compelling arguments. But I don't ever want anybody to just say, you know what, Caleb, he's pretty close to me politically, so whatever he says, I'm just going to go with that. There are people that do this with Donald Trump. They're the ones that I talk about, the Trumpettes that believe that Donald Trump can do no wrong. Granted, I really like a lot of the things that Donald Trump has done. I do. But I don't like them because Trump likes them, because there's some things that Trump does that I don't like. I like them because I think the policies themselves are good ideas. I mean, heck, there are even, even though it's incredibly rare, there are even times where Bernie supports a policy that I like. It almost never happens. But specifically, I can think of uh, he was trying to bring down trade barriers about medication between the U.S. and Canada, which I was 100 percent fine with the protected uh, the protectionist policies that was just hurting people on both sides of the border. And so it didn't make any sense to me that those laws were in place. And so him wanting to get rid of those restrictions, I was 100 percent in favor for not because I think Bernie's a good candidate, not because I think Bernie is right on about 99 percent of things just because I thought he happened to be right on that one policy issue. And so what we've got to do is we've got to move away from this unfortunate tendency that we have now in this country to just take one person that we happen to ally with most of the time politically and just let them do all of our thinking for us. It's a lazy intellectual way to have an opinion but not have to actually do any thinking and any analysis to really reach that opinion on your own. And unfortunately, it seems as though and again, even though I'm someone that really likes Tuberville as a person, it seems as though, at least based on that answer, what Tuberville is saying is that's what he's going to do with Donald Trump, that whatever Donald Trump says, that's what I'm going to go along with. I don't want that. We have separate branches of government for a reason. And Congress is supposed to be a check on the, the president, even if they happen to share his party. In the same way that I wish that there had been some Democrats that stood up during the Obama administration say, uh, yeah, I like President Obama, but I'm not going along with that. That's insane. I also want Republicans. I also want people, because this is an indication that they're at least thinking for themselves, that stand up and say, yeah, I'm, I'm on board with a lot of Trump's agenda, but I can't go along with him on this one. And unfortunately, and maybe this is a winning strategy, I don't know. Like I said, there's a lot of people that kind of think the same way that, that Tuberville seems to, that we'll just go with whatever Trump says and that'll be the, the philosophy. Whatever he, whatever position he takes on an issue, I'm just going to go along with that. That's an indication of somebody who doesn't want to think for themselves. Just in case you were wondering, yes, I am a straight white Christian male and a small government constitutionalist which means I have no chance of getting any help from the government and wouldn't accept their help even if they offered. Which means I'm going to need you to like and subscribe because my gun collection is not going to pay for itself.